Welcome back guys, it's Greg here, and today I wanna to talk about the best semiconductor stocks and the best 5G stocks that you can add to your portfolio. What are the differences and can you take advantage of something here that's gonna be big in the future at a low price? These semiconductor and 5G stocks are extremely important today because they are inside our phones, mobile devices, iPads, whatever you use every day, which by the way, you can use to get up to four free stocks from Weeble. They're gonna be giving that out to everyone just for depositing $100 into your account. Only takes a few minutes to set up. So if you want free stock, I'd go ahead and set up to Weeble, and then you can buy the stocks that we talk about in this video. Or not, you don't have to. I'm just a guy on YouTube, but I think we like free stuff. I know I do. All right, so let's get to the video. I was uh, sparked to do this because Jim Kramer sent me his Action Alerts Plus on Tuesday, which was yesterday, and it said he's discussing semiconductor stocks. I don't have a lot of them, so I wanted to open that up and check out the transcript or the video. So here we are, and I'm gonna scroll down because I already read this, and he says, boom. You want to have exposure to semis. There's just no doubt about it. Now, my goal is to find you opportunities and ideas. That's the first part. And then if there's no doubt about it, if it's like a sure thing, then I definitely want to deliver it to you guys because a lot of people have lost money in investments. I want you to make money. That's kind of the point of investing, to make money for the future. So which stocks are good and what's the difference? Well, first let's start with semiconductors. A semiconductor stock makes the microchips that go into devices um, like this iPhone here. Uh, it's iPhone 11, big one. Um, like this computer here, which I'll talk about in a second. Kind of an Apple guy, but I also love Microsoft. I love Intel, all those products for you guys. I think PCs are fantastic. I'm just not that good at them. And then it's not a level playing field because there's different companies that make the chips. And some have access to smaller, more precise, more advanced technologies. If you look up what a semiconductor is, you're gonna get information about inodes and crystalline solids and electric conductors. That's too much for your average investor. So let me just tell you which semiconductor stocks I like and let's do it. All right, so the first one I like, which Jim likes, is Micron, which he talks about up here, right there at the top, Micron. Micron's a great company. Um, I've owned it for a couple weeks believe I'm already up a few percent on that. I'll try to put that on the screen so you can see what I've made on that. Great company, cheaper stock, um, really powerful future. The next semiconductor stock we wanna look at is Broadcom right here. Jim says Broadcom's down, it shouldn't be down. That's one of those bigger companies that might not move as much as Micron, but really solid and has really made people's careers. Investors that have been around since the 90s have totally made their careers off of Broadcom. And the third semiconductor stock I like is AMD. AMD is super high right now. A lot of people should have been buying it at $50 when Kramer said it's a buy. I bought a little bit and then I sold it like 60 because I thought it went up too much and then it went up to 90, so I kicked myself. But um, AMD is gonna be around for the future. Those three, Micron, Broadcom, and AMD are great buys for you. Time is on your side. Ride them out if they go down and buy a little more. And honestly guys, you just need three stocks in each category. The problem with these top 10 lists on Google, while they do get a lot of traffic, I'll give them that, the problem is that the top 10 lists have to include some stocks that are smaller and like more feeble companies just to get to 10, and that can lead to you buying a company that's gonna get their market share eaten up by a bigger company, and then your stock's gonna go down 10%, and you're gonna be like, what the heck, I thought semiconductors were a good industry, but we just bought the wrong, the wrong one. Um, because the name sounded cool or something. So you don't need top 10 lists here. With blogging you do, but you do not with stocks. And that is why. So we covered semiconductors. Now let's look at 5G stocks. Catherine West says, well, I have to ask about 5G companies. A 5G company, which I didn't know about, um, you know, as far as the definition until quite recently, is the fifth generation cell phone network. Gonna connect object, people, devices, places. It's not everywhere right now. A lot of us still operate on 4G. Um, doesn't mean gigabytes, although 5G does have a much faster gigabyte transfer than 4G, up to 100 times. So that's generally what you need to know. I'm gonna warn you, you're gonna see companies like Verizon and stuff, if you look up 5G stocks, you don't wanna buy a cell phone company stock 
because there's so much competition. They don't have as much of a unique product. They have a service and we want companies to have the unique product. Which ones are they? Which are the best 5G stocks to buy right now? Because we already covered the best semiconductor stocks. Well, in terms of 5G, we are going to have Marvell, which is Kramer's favorite. I haven't bought a ton of that. Um, I just don't know much about it, but it's a good name. You should definitely look it up. Then we have Apple. Apple, which is a 5G company because they offer phones like this one right here. And they use the chips, the semiconductor chips in them. So really good connect connectivity there. Apple's earnings seem to be pointing to a higher growth in the future because it's low right now by some analysts and it's really been beaten down. Remember, it was up to like $135. So I have a good amount of Apple, and I believe you should too. So great, we have Marvel, Apple, and then we have Broadcom as another 5G play. Broadcom just made it into our 5G stocks and our semiconductor stocks, so that should be a sign that it's good. And you have NVIDIA, which is not 5G, but makes the chips also really good, just a little bit pricey. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit deeper. So what are the devices that we're actually using? And what products do we want to rep? Well, I just got this MacBook Air here, the new one for 2020. Upgraded my old MacBook Air that I had since 2016. Most beautiful little silver computer. Took it to the beach in Mexico. Edited so much on it, you know, it just it was time. So I got this new computer thinking it'd be about the same. You know, I actually got a different MacBook Air and then I got this one. But long story short for another video, but the reason I ended up with this brand new MacBook Air is the M1 chip because it's that much faster. All right, so when you're doing something like video editing, when you're flipping through your browser screens, everything just operates a little bit faster. Pop around. When I'm, when I'm recording on Camtasia or Final Cut, everything is a lot more zippy. That is something we want, guys, and it makes work and life a lot easier. As opposed to having your fan come on and having resources overload and things go slow, you want this M1 chip, which is going to be great. So you can buy Apple because then you get the products that use the M1 chip, or you can buy the creators of the M1 chip. And when I Google that, you'll find the names like Samsung, which is a little bit out of our budget, and you'll find the names like TSM, which is Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing co this is where research helps because tsm has a market share in making apple's m1 chip their stock's down today but if you look at this trend boy that's a stock i want to hold that's a stock i want to have bought at the beginning of the year look at that would have at least doubled our money so although the chip is apple's own chip that they're getting into making their own stuff tsm has that five nanometer production um, and I believe they're going to be a big part of the chip for Apple too because I don't think Apple can make everything themselves even if they'd want to. So when you research you might find another one to add to our list. Um, let's just summarize our list but for everyone too because we, we don't need too many stocks but I want to make sure we capped them all here. So for our semiconductors we had Micron, Broadcom, and AMD, three of them. And for our 5G stocks we had Marvell, Apple, Broadcom again, and now we have TSM. All right, guys, so happy buying. Hope you enjoyed that look into the best semiconductor stocks and the best 5G stocks to buy in the market today. A reminder, if you haven't bought them yet, you can sign up to Weeble. They're going to be giving you up to four free stocks just for depositing $100 into your account, which you can then use to buy stocks like Micron, which is MU, you can get a whole stock and then some for that because you can do fractional shares. And yeah, hope you enjoy getting some free stock. Or not. But I know I did. And we like free stuff. So yeah, that's how it goes, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that gives you a brief intro. Not too techy because we don't really like that, but not too basic either. And um, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. That like button does not want to be messed with. You need to hit it. Make sure it changes colors to blue or black and make sure you get that subscribe button clicked as well so you get our next videos, which are definitely time sensitive because if you wanna buy a stock, you wanna buy it today. You don't wanna buy it three weeks from today when it's up like five or six dollars. So make sure you subscribe for the latest stuff. Post a comment with any questions. No comment is too small or crazy. Definitely not stupid because I'm stupid a lot of the time. 
and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.